Hey guys, Cloudwolf here, and today we're going to be talking about particles, and we're going to be working right to left. But why do we read left to right? So today we're going to be going over particles, as requested by Findus456. Uh, he was like, how do you show particle on player? And I was like, what? So I decided let's just do a particle tutorial in general because most of them are kind of old and this one is going to try and cover everything. We are covering colored, we are covering blocks, and we are covering just how to use particles in general. There's a few extra nuances that are a little bit uh, finicky that you'll have to play around with yourself, um, but hopefully this will give you the ground to do so. If you are new to particle, then this is great. If you are a experienced particle user, maybe you'll figure out some things or understand some things that you didn't know before. So let's start with in general because we got to start somewhere everywhere. So the particle command slash particle, the name of the particle, which you can find them by doing slash particle, hit tab, check out all those particles that you have to pick from. Um, pretty much anything, there's a lot of particles in the game. Uh, we got lava, we got mob spell, we got tons of stuff that you can play around with and check out. Um, but we're going to play around with cloud because you guys love to play with me. So, oh wait, Never mind. Don't don't think don't think about that. Okay, we're gonna play around with cloud because it's really easy to do. And when you get really close, look how buggy that is. I don't know why. Okay. Anyway, so we're gonna play around with the cloud particle. And I have a basic command set up here. So for all particles, you need to commands. You have to have the type of particle. You have where it's gonna be played, either a exact coordinate or relative coordinate. This one's just one block up. Um, and then you need how wide the radius is, which is what we'll go over first. Uh, you need how fast it's going how many to play, what type it is, and the last one is the selector. So these two last ones most people don't know because you don't need them. You can play it without it, just like that. So first off, let's go over the where it's going to be played. So this is how many blocks in either direction it the particle can appear. So if I change this to 0, 1, 0, that means that it can appear only in the exact center of this block, like right there. Uh, in the x and z direction, that's these last two, but the middle one is the y, so it can appear one block higher in the y. Now, think about <laughs> particle smoke uh, cloud, is by default it's going to flow in a particular direction, and right now it is flowing straight up, which is just ridiculous. Um, but if I change the, hold on, if I change the speed to zero for you, do that, now you only see it. So we're just going right here. Look at that. All it is, is it's just only between this block, the block above it about so, and the block below it about so. If we change it, if we add in an X and Z component, it's going to give us a little poof cloud, like in a nice radius. Now, I do find that setting the number, uh, these three numbers here is not 100% accurate. I'll put one, but actually you see some showing up in a radius of two or even three. So you're gonna have to play around to see the exact size you want. Um, the next one is speed. Speed is the one where a lot of tricks get played around with. So speed in terms of a couple different particles, there's the cloud particle. I'm just listing these so you can check them out, but I'm only going to play around with the clouds. So we got the cloud particle. We've got, I think, portal as well. We've got, um, I think smoke as well does it. But basically when you mess with the speed, it does different things. So if I set the speed to one, this is just gonna make everything just go like everywhere, right? Now, if I set it to 0.1, it's going to make it go a little slower. So there you go. So we go a little slower, a little faster. Now, as you can see, you can also mess around with where it is. So if we put the particle like that, we put the speed to 0.5, it's going to start going off real high. Now, if we set it to 1, it's just going nuts. Look at that. Now, if we set that to now this is something else you can do i am literally putting this to be zero so if we do slash particle the speed and then the count now one thing that's strange is you can mess around with the count so if i change it to zero there's always some weird kind of effect this is what happens when you set the cloud particle count to zero so it's trying to figure out like it doesn't i don't know if the game gets confused by putting in zero so it ends up putting an infinite amount but something weird is happening because I give it a tag, like I give it a count of zero, but it has to be one. So I don't know exactly what's happening there, but anything more than zero and it'll just behave normally. Uh, there's a couple different things you can do with that um, that I can think of off the top of my head, but not too much. So 
you can also, you know, play around with decimal places, really screws it up and does some weird things. Um, another thing about this particle in particular, it, I think it interacts with entities. So execute at A, and we are going to add that in there. So we are going to play the smoke particle, I mean the cloud particle at everybody. Then when we put the speed to be something like zero, oh, let's give it like a 0.1. And we'll let it be played 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, so as you can see, look, it's only shooting downwards. So there's a lot of little things like, well, not necessarily Easter eggs, but little things that you can find out about certain particles. Uh, this one in particular, if you give it a really small radius, less than one, like uh, somewhere between zero and one, and if you give it uh, a small speed, uh, I'm, I don't think it works with a big speed. Nope, if you give it a small speed that's less than one, it'll basically only shoot the particles downwards, and there's probably ways to manipulate it to shoot other directions, but there's some little, you know, little extra, extra little Easter eggs in there, which is something we'll get onto later. So now you want to do something else. So the next one is mode. So let me get rid of this particle, the execute, so I can mess around with the command still. Okay, so we're going to do mode. So there's force and normal. Normal, it just means it's going to play normally. Force, it means even if I go to uh, particles and do it to minimal, I still see it because it is forced at me. That is really good for certain servers or minigames if you're making like a smoke bomb. Then this selector says who it's going to be played at. At a tag equals yes. Let's do at a tag equals yes. I can't see it. Scoreboard players tag at p add yes. Now I can see it. Remove, yes. Now what you can do with this is you can set up um, some kind of like, I don't know, like a system with like, let's give ourselves give at P armor underscore stand. So we'll have like three armor stands, right? And if the player selects this one, they will be tagged with yes and you'll they'll see the particle. So you'll do, let me see, execute at E type equals armor underscore stand. So we'll have like a button that they click and tag at P add yes. And once they click it, it's like, hey, these are selected. So that's how you can make it so that only I can see it when I select it, which is cool. So you can have like a cool little GUI, even with multiplayer, it'll still work because only the players who are selecting that have it. Um, I guess you can come up with a really cool like thing, kind of like on Hypixels mini games where you select cards and stuff. I forget, Sky Clash, I believe is a good example of uh, using particles for only specific players. But yeah, that's how that works. Now, um, normally you would just ignore these two or just use force. Just leave it like that. And uh, just, oh, sorry. I guess if you do force, whoa, let's get rid of this. Okay, so there you go. So you just do force and you're good. So that's all there is to like particles in general. There's a couple little side things that I'll go over too. So here we have blocks. We got falling dust, block crack, and block iron crack, icon crack. So right off the bat, so falling dust, it comes from sand when it's levitating, which is a cool little, like, it looks like smoke particle. Now, pay no attention to the color. I'm just talking about the um, shape. And this one always falls downwards. There might be some manipulation as well with uh, changing the counts and stuff. Uh, here we have block crack, which is when you break a block, and now it's purple because it has no texture. And this is icon crack, which is when you break a block, it's just playing these particles straight down. So if we want to change the color, you have to put in the ID of the block. So we're going to hit function or just F3H and do advanced tooltips shown. So now that advanced tooltips are shown, you can see things. So what block do we want? We're going to make it a diamond block. We'll play around with, uh, actually emerald blocks are better. Emerald block, block of emerald. This says number 0133. So we're going to type in the end here. Instead of zero, we're going to do 0133. Boom, it's got like a green color, like a like an emerald block. Now we'll check this out. 0133. You don't have to have the zero. I just do it for consistency. Um, but as you can see, there's little chips of the emerald block peppered in there. 0133. And this one has very clear chips of the pep of the emerald block. So that's how you do the block crack. You just check for the block ID and let's do 21, 21, and 21, which is just gray because it has stone in the middle. That's lapis lazuli ore, or 22, and 22, and 22. 
There you go. So that's how you get the different colors if you just want this. That's pretty good, but at the same time, it's always false. So um, let me just do this in three. Okay, as you can see, you can always have this straight line. So we can't really get a rainbow or anything because you'll always see it because it's just like it always falls, which is kind of annoying. Uh, wait, let me tr actually, I've never tried this before. No, even if you get it speed of zero, it's still going to fall. So we, we need to go on to something a little bit more advanced if we want to mess around with colors in such a fancy way. So this is how you do color particles. So check this out. So we got redstone dust with a bunch of different colors here, four to be exact. And there's a couple different ways that we do this. So first for red dust. So red dust, this is normal. Now what I'm showing you here is just to, uh, the numbers that I have put in here are really important because it's supposed to elaborate certain parts. So here we have the X, the Y, and the Z. Except in this instance, when we put one in the X, it's not going to play the redstone dust in the X direction left to right like the normal one would have where it plays it more left to right um, because we also have a count of zero if we just do a count of well sorry if we do a count of one it will do play that way but if we do a count of zero that's kind of like their secret settings mode um, for all the particles so I would try count of zero for every particle so count when we set it on count of zero uh, we can mess around with this x y and z to change the color so as you can see, I have the far left one, 1, and the next two point one. Now, you can't make the next two 0 because when it's set to 0, it kind of defaults to 1. So you might get some, like, things confused. So set it to, like, point 0.1 or point zero one. I just leave point 0.1. That's fine. Um, so 1.1.1. One, point one, point one. Okay? So basically all of it in this left one, the biggest number in the left. This gives us a red. Now, in the next one, I did point 0.1, one, 1, and point 0.1, which means the middle is the most dominant one, which gives us a green. And the third one, we got 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 1, which means that the third one, did I say the third one? This one, I said the middle, I'm in the middle. The third one is the dominant number in this one. And we get a blue. Where do you see first, first character, red. Second character, green. Third character, blue. If you didn't know already, there's something called RGB. It's what all your screens run off of unless you got quantum dots. Um, but there you go. We got RGB, and um, that's that's how you get your colors everywhere, boys and girls. Uh, so anyway, so now with this knowledge that the first one, the more of it you put, the more red it'll be. The second one, the more of it you put, the more green it'll be. The third one, the more of it you put, the more blue it'll be. We can get colors like purple. And if you haven't guessed... Okay. And if you, <laughs> and if you haven't guessed... Uh, this purple is made by giving us one in the red and one in the blue and making green not dominant at all. Now, you can get a more deeper purple if you do, I think, 0.5. That'll give us like an indigo. Or if we do 0.7, that'll give us like a more purpley purple. Um, but for now, I'm just doing one. So that'll give us a more true purple. Now, with this, we have a bunch of colors here that you guys can get an example of. And you can also do this for... So we got green, red, blue. We got cyan, which is mixing... Um, mainly the green and the blue we got purple which is uh this is like a deep purple so it's mixing c0.5 and one now we got this also works for the mob spell particle as well any particle that has like multiple colors which is mob spell and red dust where you see like that ugly rainbow hodgepodge you can make it look like this if you set it up with a count of zero um whatever you want for here so this one you have to play this the speed also affects it um now, I haven't messed around with the speed in particular. I believe the speed in this instance is going to affect the brightness. Let's see what happens here. No idea. Okay, so I I don't play around with this enough to know exactly how the stuff affects it, but I can at least explain to you the basics. So the speed does affect it in some way, so leave it at 1,000 speed. Now, this one is a little bit different, but the same. Um, this one will work if even if there's some set to zero like it'll still work if it, these ones still work if they're set to zero but it's a little confusing to figure out um, you know to, to make them work because it's the reason why these have a little confusing properties is because it's red to begin with so you have to make sure that you set the red to point one otherwise by default the red is going to be like one um, so this one you have to have point one you always have like C.0001 because you wouldn't want red in this situation. But if you set it equal to, 
zero, it'll end up being pink. So we just put it to 0 0.001 because it's red dust by default. Red dust is going to have red and then it'll just mix the colors around. This one is not by default red. This one's actually by default. Oh, this one's by default white. That might have to do with the speed. Um, but anyway, so this one you can just play around with the full number. So green, set it equal to some number. Let's see what happens if we do one. Okay, so this one does behave a little bit differently. I don't exactly know why, but the middle one is negative, and the first and second one you set to positive. And then you can just mess around with it the same way you did with it before. See, the middle one is green. We're doing all green. And I think we're doing a little red here. But this one's a little different. Since this one is so different, and I can't explain it like too perfectly to you guys, uh, I'm going to leave the particle commands for these ones in particular in the description. Here we have it moving a little bit different since we set it to 10. Let's see. Yeah, anyway, so it's just a little bit weird. I feel really bad for kind of tripping up. This has been a pretty good tutorial in my opinion so far. Um, but here we have magenta and pink. So if you really want to use mob spell, because uh, it does look kind of cool. It looks like little like it looks like an element, honestly, like elemental class thing. I don't know, man, but it looks really nice. Um, if you want these, they these will be in the description. These particle demand commands, the colors. Um, these ones won't because I explained how to do it, and you should be able to play around with it too. Um, I don't know. I just don't want to load the description with particles. I mean, maybe I'll I'll put these five basic ones. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to particle. There's not too much more to explain except maybe with like portal because that one has some interesting features. Like if we do change this to portal, set the count to zero, it's got a really, it's got some interesting effects uh, in terms of where the portal warps to. Um, notice how now if we set it to one, it's not as thin. And uh, yeah, it's just got a lot of weird properties as well. Uh, now you can see it's kind of pulling in towards the block that we have it set to. Um, and if we put it far away and set this equal to zero. I don't know. Okay, well, point is you can make these particles for portal suck around and stuff. You just have to mess around with the numbers a bunch. Um, it's just a really kind of strange, but anyways, there's a bunch of strange stuff you can figure out with particle, a bunch of Easter eggs, a bunch of little hidden things. I'd consider setting, color, changing colors of red dust an Easter egg and changing colors of mobs, mob egg as well. Um, but other than that, guys, if you found this tutorial helpful, leave a thumbs up. It would, I would really appreciate that. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, go ahead and leave a comment in the description. Um, in the description, yes, you guys can access the description, right? Uh, leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, if you guys haven't already, maybe consider subscribing. I do tutorials, I do maps, uh, lots of cool maps. And, uh, and then I do some other extra fun stuff just to play around with you guys and uh, see what you guys know. So anyways, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later. Peace.